welcome to Mount Zion, where you will have a mountaintop worship experience. To know that God is with you is enough to calm you. Because here it is, God may allow you to go into the furnace, but the truth of the matter is just to know that he can deliver you. He has power to do that or to ease your trouble mind. Prayers. If you would open your Bibles today. Amen. Open your Bibles to the book of Mark, chapter number five. And as we open our Bibles to the book of Mark, chapter number five, we do so with this thought in mind. It is a happy Father's Day to all of my fathers in the house. Amen. 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 I know you said happy Father's Day several times this morning. But can you celebrate the fathers in the house with me today? Amen. 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 Stand, if you would, as we open the word of God, chapter number five, the book. Hallelujah. Known as Hallelujah, the book of Mark. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'll begin reading at verse number 22. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I tell you, one of our songs for our church, our family reunion years ago used to be, Lord, you brought me from a mighty long way. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Here it is, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Verse number 22, chapter number five, book of Mark. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus, by name. And seeing him, he fell at his feet and implored him earnestly, saying, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the word of God for the people of God, that he may be glorified. We might be enlightened. Hallelujah. And encouraged even in this time. Father God, we thank you today for your word, your will, your way. Our prayer today, oh God, is that you would illuminate your word, cause it to jump and leap from the pages into our minds, from our minds into our hearts, from our hearts into our hands. In other words, oh God, we ask that what we do not know, you teach us, where we have not been, you take us. And what we are not, you mold and make us. Father, as always, I pray that you anoint me with that anointing that makes preaching of the word of God easy. Father, anoint your people with that anointing that makes the receptivity of the word of God easy. In the name that's above every name. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we thank you. Let the people of God say amen, amen. and amen. amen. Look at your neighbor, if you would, brothers and sisters, and say, neighbor, amen. this is what God will do, what God will do. through a faith-filled father. A faith father. Amen, amen. We're talking about a faith-filled father today. Amen. Amen. How many fathers do I have in the house today? Amen. 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 You can do better than that, sisters. If this was Mother's Day, the men would be hanging off of the fans up there, clapping for the mothers. Amen. Since I have a room filled with faith-filled fathers, a room filled with fathers, I can be transparent and I can be so honest today. I can speak on behalf of some of those fathers in this room. When I make the statement that being a father ain't always easy. Can I get a baritone amen in the house? Amen. It's not always easy because we recognize and realize that as a father, we have a list in our mind. 
The list consists of duties that we have. Duties of taking care of our children. Duties of making sure that our children have proper clothing and uh, make sh making sure there's food on the table and a uh, roof over their heads. Duties of making sure that they're educationally matriculating at a level that they should be. Duties. Duties, uh, brothers and sisters, as, as men and as fathers, of making sure that, that our children don't make the same mistakes that we've made in life. We, we, we often find ourselves giving directives and direction to our children. And as we do so, we're hoping that they will acquiesce to what we have to say. But we realize that, that being a father ain't easy because quite often what we have to say out to our children, the world is saying something totally different. The world is telling them that you don't need a man. I got a bold amen on that. The, the world is telling them, telling our children that daughters, girls, you don't need a father. You can do this all by yourself. The world is telling our sons, you don't need a father. There's a whole bunch of other folk on the outside that can influence you in a way where you can be quote unquote successful. You, you can have money, you can have fame, and you can have fortune if you do what, what the world says. But fathers, we know that, that that fast money, we know, hallelujah, sometimes we know because of what we've done, and then sometimes we know because of what we've seen. But most of all, we know because of what God has said. Faith-filled fathers. Fathers who love their children, no matter what the situation is, we just love them a little differently. We, 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 we're not so quick to just scoop them up every time they fall. Sometimes we let them fall in order for them to realize that falling ain't so bad. Falling is only bad when you can't get back up. But as long as you can get back up, falling is all right. Faith-filled fathers. Fathers who recognize that all of the educational matriculation in the world, all of the money in the world, all of the other stuff in the world, all of, all of the things that feel good to you, they mean nothing if you ain't got God. See, when you got God, you realize that some stuff you ain't got no business with no way. Faith-filled fathers. I didn't say tongue-talking fathers. I didn't say Bible-quoting fathers. I didn't say fathers with a cross around their name. Faith-filled fathers. Because you can talk in a tongue. You can quote scripture. You can have a, a cross around your neck and still have no faith. Somebody knows that a faith-filled father recognizes that, that, that the objective of their faith is what determines the outcome of their, their walk. What do you mean? See, you can have faith in the wrong thing. I'm trying to be nice today because we got a couple of visitors. You, you can have faith in the wrong things. You, you can have faith in the wrong things. I, I said it a multiplicity of times because whatever your thing is may not be my thing. But the person next to you may have a different thing. We all got some things that we have shown that we have faith in. How do you know when somebody has faith in something? Somebody, you can tell that a person has faith in something based upon where you turn when life happens. Faith in my money. My money can get me out of this. Faith in my connections. My connections can get me out. Faith in my intellect. See, the reason why everybody else got caught, because they wasn't smart as I am. <laughs> I have faith in all kinds of stuff. And it shows up in a bunch of 
different ways. But in this passage of scripture today, y'all, this, this, this faith-filled father, this truly a man of God, the Bible tells us Jairus, this man who, brothers and sisters, blows me away as I read his story. The reason why is because Jairus' name in Hebrew, it simply means he will awaken. Mm. Jairus, this faith-filled father, was a leader in the synagogue. He was a man that sat at the high table of the synagogue. What blows me away about him is Jairus, in this powerful posture and position before the people, still recognized that though I have this position before the people, I still got stuff going on in my home that I can't control. Jairus has this daughter, y'all. I don't know if y'all know this or not, but, but, but those of you who are more than just perusers of the pericope, but those of you who dive into the scriptures, you know that Jairus has this daughter that has fallen ill. She's sick. And let me tell you something about men. Sisters, if you don't know this, men, we like to have the answers. We do. We like to have the answers. That's the reason why when women say, we need to talk, men be like, oh, Lord, okay, no, well. <laughs> can I get an amen on that? Amen. We like to have the answers. Men in, in powerful positions like to have the answers. If, you, if you're an entrepreneur, you want to have the answers. You, if you're driving on a highway and you get lost. You, 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 you want to know why you keep seeing the same gas station in the same spot. You want to have the answers. And, and here it is. What I love about Jairus, a faith-filled man, he understands that when I don't have the answers, I need to go to somebody, the rock that's higher than I. I need to go to someone who knows more than I do, somebody who, who can help me. See, a faith-filled father recognizes when he does not have the power to fix the situation. And call the best doctors. Got the best medicine. But my daughter is still ill. She's still falling sick and I can't do nothing about it. If you ever want to get to a father's heart, mess with his daughter. Don't ask me how I know. To see a daughter or a son in a place and space where, listen, listen brothers and sisters, where they are ravaged by something that you can't fix. Stays on your heart, stays on your mind. But what I love about this particular passage of scripture, brothers and sisters, the faith of this man shows up. How? I'll tell you how it shows up. The Bible tells us what? It tells us that as Jesus had crossed over uh, the other side of the, of the, 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 the lake, a great crowd gathered about him. And he was beside the sea. And then as he was beside the sea, after he has healed, what? Cast out demons out of a boy? As he's done so much. Listen, what, what the Bible says. It says that this man comes to Jesus. Faith-filled father understands, brothers and sisters, that though there be situations I can't handle, I got to find somebody that can. And the best one to handle your situation is Jesus. I don't know Jesus, but I heard about him. I've not had personal experience with him, but I heard about him. And just to hear what he can do, if he can heal blinded eyes, if he can, uh, if he can uh, uh, lay hands on the sick and they recover, if he can give strength to the legs of one who is an invalid, if he can do all of that, if he can feed multitudes, if he can turn water into wine, surely he can help me with my situation. Mm, my young fathers, let me tell you something. If you haven't experienced a situation yet that you can't handle, let me tell you like my, great, my, my grandfather would say, just keep on living. Keep on saying good morning. Uh, 
The Bible says that he came to Jesus. Now, you got to picture this thing, y'all. He's a ruler in the synagogue. He sits at the high table and the, 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 the religious people look at him like he got all the answers. <laughs> he finds himself throwing himself at the feet of Jesus. Listen to this. J Jairus, uh, seeing Jesus, fell at his feet. You, 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 you do realize that he's a religious man. He's the man that the people around him look up to. But let me say this, just because you're religious or just because you, you're a man of God don't mean you got to be stupid. Because mm -mm, you know what? There's a lot of preachers that read this stuff, they teach this stuff, and they preach this stuff, but they don't live this stuff. How could that be, Pastor. I mean, if they up there and they saying all, you know, and they, how, can, how is it that they could fall like that? I'll tell you why. Again, I tell you, and I'll continue to repeat this until the day I leave here. Listen, brothers and sisters, uh, you can have the gifts of the spirit. But if you got the gifts of the spirit and you don't have the fruit of the spirit, you're going to have a jacked up life because the gifts of the spirit allow us to do what Jesus did when he was here. But the fruit of the Spirit allows us to be who he is. You need the fruit and the gifts. And here's the thing. Gifts come instantaneously. But fruit, you got to work on that thing. You got to till the soil. You got to pull the weeds. You got to put some manure down. You, the fruit take work. Learn how to be patient. You know how you learn to be patient? When you are in situations where you need... Move to the front of the class. This man finds himself saying, I'm not just going to talk about it. I'm not just going to talk about David and how David was a worshiper. I'm going to be a worshiper. He recognizes Jesus for who he is. And the Bible says he throws himself at Jesus' feet. This man that other folk look up to finds himself throwing himself at the feet of Jesus and faith Field fathers always find themselves at the feet of Jesus. Financial situation, go to the feet. Emotional situation, go to his feet. Hallelujah. The Bible says that he throws himself at the feet of Jesus and he begs Jesus. Earnestly. That means loudly. That means vehemently. That means with much gusto. And, let me tell you something. Mothers, if, I, I, if the men don't give me an amen on this, the sisters will. Uh, uh, parents, when you recognize how bad off your children are, and you know that can't nobody do nothing about it but Jesus, it'll cause you to cry out in the midnight hour, in the morning hour, in the noonday hour, in the afternoon hour, when you see your children going in a place and a space that ain't no good for them. It makes you cry out, Jesus, help me. Mm. That's how a pastor feels about his people, his parishioners, the sheep. When I see you going somewhere that the words say, don't go there. Amen. See, I was getting an amen, yeah, but that's all gone now. <laughs> Pull. <clears throat> he said, look, my little daughter is at the point of death. Jesus she is teetering at the point of death. She is right there at the point where she can slip over from this side to the next. He says, Jesus, that's the facts. Faith-filled fathers recognize the facts. That's the facts. 
See, I know people say, don't say it. It'll, it'll happen. No, it ain't. No, it's happening. Whether you say it or not. She's at the point of death. But I don't let the facts get in the way of my faith. You ever been broke? I know some of y'all don't know what broke is. Have you ever been broke? If you've ever been broke, where you had more month than you had money, if you've ever been broke, if you ain't never been broke, you ought to be shouting louder than everybody else in here. Because you, you don't know nothing about what I'm about to say. When, when you broke, stuff that you used to didn't like to eat. Man, them sardines and mustard. Them Vienna sausages. Or, or if you old school, Vienna weenies. Let me tell you, I remember in college, man, I, many a night, them crackers and Vienna sausages was my friend. With a little mustard on it. Come on now. If you've ever been broke, a can of tuna. You don't need salt, pepper, lemon, pepper. You don't need none of that. You just need it open. If you've ever been broke, the fact was you were broke. But that didn't make you give up on life because you say, I'm broke today. What you said was, I'm broke, but I got enough to get me to tomorrow. And for some of us, we said, this ain't the first time I've been broke. <laughs> ain't first time. Come on. If you've ever only been broke one time in your life, I ain't going to ask you to raise your hand. <laughs> but here it is. When you were in that state, something about that state as you look back upon it, causes you to be what? Grateful and thankful. Deacon Bradley, the reason why we're grateful and thankful is because for most of us in here, it's been a minute since we've been broke. It's been a minute. Oh yeah, I smell, I smell that cologne. I smell that perfume. It's been a minute since you've been broke. Because, you know, when you broke, you start selling stuff. <laughs> Listen, when you broke, you start cleaning your car out, looking for change. Go all into the couch. Move the, move the kids out the way. <sighs> I just heard somebody say when they was broke, they found some nickels and hammered them to make them big enough with a hammer so it looked like quarters. I just heard somebody say. We used to call them slugs back in the day when we was going to the video arcade. Please, uh, please explain to your children what a video arcade is when you get home, amen. You had to go somewhere? Yeah, okay. Um, Lord have mercy. His faith was still active, even though the facts were the same. How do we know his faith was active? Because he said, Lord, come and lay your hands on her so that she will be made well and live. She's at the point of death. But if you lay your hands on her, she will have true life. And guess what the Bible says? The Bible says Jesus went with him. Jesus was like, this dude is, this is my kind of dude. And he goes for a walk with him on his way to Jairus' house. And the Bible says that Jairus is with Jesus walking. And then guess what? The Bible also tells us that there's a great crowd around Jesus. 
And as there's a great crowd around Jesus, y'all, the Bible tells us that this woman comes up that had an issue of blood. This woman who had been bleeding for years. This woman who had a situation. Now here it is. Jairus is walking with Jesus and his disciples, you know, Peter, James, John, and, and all these people are around. And this woman interrupts Jairus' story. His story is, we're on our way for the master to touch my daughter. But this woman, because let me tell you all something, just because you got a situation don't mean that the world stops. <sighs> Jesus is walking. And the Bible says Jesus halts his walk. And he says, whoa. Disciples are looking at him like, what's up? Somebody touched me. Man, it's a crowd around you. Come on, Jesus. No, 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 no. This wasn't just a bump into. This wasn't just a, a, a brazing up against. Somebody touched me. And listen, the touch that I got wasn't just a touch from the outside. It was something that came from inside of them to the inside of me. And what was on the inside of me went inside of them. Bible says this woman has an issue of blood. But in her heart, she said, if I can but just touch the fringes of his garment. Then I know I'll be made whole. This is what I love about this. This woman has faith that I don't need a conversation with him. I, I don't need him to turn and touch me. But what I do need is just to get close enough to him. Have you ever been there before? Where you woke up on a Sunday morning and said, if I can just get close enough. She said, I know I'll be made whole. She, she began to talk to Jesus. And you know, you ain't walking and talking. Jesus pauses and, and is talking to her. I can imagine Jairus was like, all right now. All right. All right, Jesus. I'm going to stay right here. But I'm watching the clock. And the woman says to Jesus, I, I, I just knew that if I could touch you, I, I, I'd be made whole. What was wrong with me? that I, I spent money on over the years. I've investigated. I've gone on Google and YouTube and tried to find out if I drink this, if I take that. I, I, I've done everything I could to fix my situation. But, but what I come to realize is uh, when word got to me that there was a Jesus who, who could heal the blind, that I, there was a Jesus who could do miraculous work. I said, if I can just get to him, if I could just reach out and touch it. You know, you know, you, 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 you know, um, part of the reason why folks stay in what they're in m many times, because instead of getting to Jesus, they, thank you, sister, they run from Jesus. I can't go to church because them church people. Come on, saints. I ain't get no amens, no claps, none of that. Yeah. They hypocrites over there at that church. They hypocrites. Can I tell you another place they got hypocrites? They, they, they got hypocrites on your job. They, they got hypocrites at Kroger. They, they got hypocrites at the Al Green concert. They got hypocrites at, at, at Beyonce. Probably some hypocrites was the ones that packaged up uh, your T-shirt that you bought from the Beyonce concert. They, they got hypocrites at all kinds of, at the bar. They got hypocrites at, at the steakhouse, y'all. All right, let me move on to the end of the sermon. Let me move on. Jesus looks at her. He says, lady, let me tell you something. It wasn't the fringes that made you whole. It was your faith. Now, can I say this, y'all? I believe, based upon my uh, study of the word, I believe that that was purposeful 
I, I believe that Jesus, knowing him as I do, that he doesn't do anything just haphazardly. I, I believe he sets stuff up in order for a greater, a, a greater outcome to take place. And, and listen, he will allow you to have an issue of blood so that other folk can have their faith incur- increased. Okay, let me keep on talking. So he's walking because he said, your faith made you whole. And so now he gets to almost to the house of Jairus. Folks are weeping and wailing and crying. Folks are, are hollering. They had professional wailers back then. And usually if you had your professional wailers, y'all know what a professional wailer is, don't you? Okay, uh, what was it? Uh, good times? Weeping Wanda. Thank you. Thank you. That was her. Lord have mercy. High five, sis. Weeping Wanda. She would love to go to funerals. And folks love to have her come to a funeral. Ain't nothing like having somebody cry with you. That's a professional. How is it that you're able to cry so well? This is what I do. Y'all remember the song, Praise is what I do. (laughs) The professional wailers are outside and they're watching and they're wailing. They're crying and someone comes up to J. Iris and says, J. Iris, I need to tell you something. Your daughter that was sick, she's now dead. Mm. Your child that was sick is now dead. You thought she was too far for you to help. Now you know she's too far for you to help. Jesus looks at him. I love this, y'all. Uh, li- listen to this. Listen to this. The Bible says in verse number uh, 38, they came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and Jesus saw a commo- commotion, people we- weeping and wailing loudly. And when he had entered, he said to them, why are you making a commotion? Why are y'all so loud? And you know it's Jesus because it's in red. Oh, y'all, Okay. He says, why are, you, why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. <sighs> she's not dead, but she's sleeping. The, the difference between death and sleeping is if somebody is dead, then they're dead. But if they're sleeping, they can be awakened. In other words, what's impossible to y'all has been set up for me to get here and do what only I can do. Yeah, you you got what, what looks like a dead situation. A dead scenario in your house, in your life. And here it is. Jesus says, if you invite me into the situation, let me get in. Let me do what only I can do. What you see as being dead, I'll wake that thing up. See, see, see. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, look, look at, look at, look at, look at what Jesus said. He says, "Why y'all doing?" She's, she's but sleeping, and they laughed at him. You know, I don't hang out with people that laugh at Jesus. And went in. Listen, they laughed at him. But he put them all outside. Because y'all know he ain't no punk now. Folk want to make Jesus seem like he just this meek and mild little lamb walking around. No, no. When he got something to do, if you ain't on his team, you better get to stepping. Because what he does is he creates an environment where folk who deserve to see his work get to see his work. Listen, listen to what he said. He says, he says, you ain't sleeping. And he laughed, they laughed, they put him out. Listen to this. And took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. Took the mama, 
the daddy, Jesus, Peter, James, and John, he says, y'all come on in the room and listen to what the book says. The book says when they went in where the child was, Jesus took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha Kumai, which means little girl, I say to you, arise. And guess what she didn't have to do? She didn't have to practice getting up. The Bible says immediately. The girl got up. And to prove that she was up, she began walking. Okay, y'all not shouting yet. Y'all not shouting because you're not thinking with the mind of these folk. See, in this particular uh, time in life and culture, a 12-year-old girl was like a 21-year-old girl now. Because here it is. At 12, she was about to become a woman. And she would probably be married by the time she was 14, 15, or 16. In other words, this father said, I done, I, I done growed this girl up. And in my mind, I'm going to walk her down the aisle. In my mind, I'm going to be able to give her away to, to someone else and, and, and transfer my responsibility uh, for providing for her to him. I, in my mind, I'm going to be able to celebrate because as a result of me giving her away, she'll have children that'll be my grandchildren. And, and listen, uh, one of those children will probably be named after me. And so I, I'm looking to celebrate being able to get. But if she dies at 12. Oh, you still ain't shot. Do you know that the olive tree takes about 15 years before it begins to produce fruit? In the Holy Land, there are thousands of olive trees that are planted. Matter of fact, they got olive trees that are planted now that are over 2,000 years old. And, and those olive trees that are 2,000 years old are still producing fruit. Y'all ain't heard what I said. Somebody put in some time 2,000 years ago in order for that olive tree to get to a place where it would produce fruit that would be beneficial not only to itself but to others around it. It, there was somebody who day after day don't know don't they saw no olives they saw no fruit they kept on tilling they kept on toiling they kept on working because one day if i put the work in one day if i'm diligent with my work one day if i keep on uh watering if i uh, keep allowing the sun to fall up on it one day it will yield the fruit that god promised me Put in the time. Now, 2,000 years later, that same tree. Woo, I could go with that, y'all. 2,000 years later, Reverend, that same tree. Let me talk to this side. 2,000 years later, that same tree. Ah, oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. 2,000 years later, it looked bad 2,000 years ago because a lot of work was being put in. 2,000 years ago, didn't look like it was going to work out because here it is. They spat on him. Look at it. They ripped his beard from his face. 2,000 years ago, they took a spear and put it in his side. 2,000 years, they nailed him to a cross. And just in case you don't know, they nailed him to a tree. Yeah. Yeah. somebody want to know what's the significance of what I'm talking about just like that girl got up uh, somebody else got up the, girl, the one who woke up the girl got waking up himself uh, the one who told her damsel rise to your feet get up out of what you in he got up a little time later. But listen, brothers and sisters, what I love about this thing is her father being in a room. Jesus had to remind him. He says, listen, whatever you do, as they've told you that she's died, don't lose faith. Uh, listen to this. 
he told him, don't lose faith. And this is what I meant when I talked earlier. And I said, Jesus, don't just let stuff happen. Here it is. Jesus is walking to raise Jairus' daughter. They're interrupted by a woman who, who reaches out in faith. And she regains or gains strength. She's healed. And as this woman is healed, Jesus looks at her while Jairus is there ear hustling and says, your faith has made you whole. That's my word to you. But to the ear hustlers, I need you to hold on to that point because you're about to see something that can shake your faith. You're about to experience something that can mess your faith up. In other words, when Jairus got there and they said, she's dead, hold on to your faith. You faith-filled father, don't let the situation shake your faith. Lord have mercy. Uh, 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 Lord have mercy. L -l -l Listen, so, so Jairus, let me calm down. Jairus. Thank you, Jesus. Experiences the raising of his daughter because no matter what he saw, she's sick. Hold it on. This woman is holding up my Jesus. Holding up my answer. Hold it on. This woman that was holding him up her faith got her healed. He said it was her faith that got her healed. So I'm going to do what she did. Y'all ain't got it yet. See some folk in this room today. You done been through hell and high water. You're going through it right now. And here it is. The devil is trying to keep you away from Jesus. But here it is. As you come to Jesus, you will experience something like this woman did. As you keep coming to Jesus, pressing your way through the crowd uh, with the mindset that I can get what I need from him and him alone, then the folk who are around you are encouraged by you to know that if he can do it for you, he can do the same thing for me. Is there anybody that knows what I'm talking about today? Anybody understands that if Jesus was lifted up on the cross, his being lifted up on the cross did more than just him dying. Uh, it drew me to him. Uh, how can I prove it? Jesus says, and I, if I be lifted up, I'll draw men unto me. How did you get here today? Not feeling good. How did you get here today? Not, not thinking good. How did you get here today? When life ain't all good, you got here because he drew you. And as he's drawing you to him, he expects you to reach out and touch him. He expects you to reach out and call upon his name. He expects you to reach out and trust him. Trust him. Trust him all for grace to trust him more. I know what the doctor said, but all for grace to trust him more. I know what the lawyer said, but all for grace to trust him. I know how you feel about your situation, but all for grace to trust him more. Just to trust him means that you get to see him do something for you that he never done before. You can't have a testimony without a test. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, what you're going through, what you're going through is only a test. Because if it had been an actual emergency, then the tone you felt heard would have been followed with information to cause you to run, to be hiding, and to be scared. But because it's only a test, you can shout about it today. Hey! But what I know, and I heard it in the spirit just now, 
There's some folk that said, I'm going to shout when I get through. When I get through this test, I'm going to shout. When I get through this problem, I'm going to shout. When I get through this situation, I'm going to shout. Oh! But somebody in here that's got a little gray hair on them. It may be under a wig. It may be under a hat. It may be under some color. But somebody who's got some experience with God will tell you something. They'll tell you, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into your heart or your mind. All the good things that God has for, in other words, they'll tell you like Big Mama said, don't wait till the battle is over. You can shout right now. You can activate your faith right now. Because faith is the substance of things. Hope for and the evidence of things unseen. In other words, you ain't got to see it in order to shout. You ain't got the experience in order to thank God for it. Thank him before he does it. By the time he does it, you'll have something else to thank him for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for faith-filled fathers to teach us. Faith-filled fathers to lead us. Faithful fathers to guide us. Faithful fathers to help us. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Listen. I would be remiss if I did not recognize that everybody didn't have a father like that everybody didn't have a father like that but I'm going to tell y'all um, I told y'all a story about my cousin I met him this past week I ain't meet him but we, we, I know, I've been knowing him but I hung out with him this past week remember that cousin I told y'all about that little old piece of meat <laughs> let, let, let me tell you something about my cousin with that little old piece of meat that, that thank God for it. And then he received a hefty, I think it was $8,000. That same day. Waiting. And, and then the letter comes later and say, oh yeah, we just want you to know you've been granted. Yeah, well, I already got the check. Praise God. But, but what I learned about him, he don't have a whole lot. But he's so grateful for what he got. Listen, listen, you, you may not have been raised with a father in the household, but that don't mean that God hadn't sent some man in your life. When you look over the corridors of your life, and if, if he hasn't sent him yet, keep on looking. He's he coming. Somebody that can pour into you. Somebody that can labor in prayer over you. Somebody that can love you the way a father is supposed to love a child. Sons, daughters. If you got a father like that, you ought to be the most grateful. But many times, folk who have parents like that, they take them for granted. Because you don't realize that there's people around you that wish they had what you got. He may not be much, but he, he may just be a little, little old piece of meat. That's it. But whatever he is, however he's poured into you, be thankful and grateful. I don't see him doing this. But you just don't know what he's doing in the midnight hour. He's calling on Jesus. Because I ain't got much to give you, but I know somebody that does. Is this a happy Father's Day for those of you who came here today? Come on. And y'all know, y'all know I'm a Baptist preacher, so I got to close five times. But for those of you men, I want to say this, those of you men who had jacked up fathers, that don't mean you can't be a great father. Mm -mm. You can be a great father. Because if you don't know nothing else, you know what not to do. <laughs> be there for your children. And I know what we as men think. I I've been there, y'all. I got to stay at work all the time so I can make this money and make things happen. But let me tell you, I I've been a hospice chaplain, I told y'all, for years. And I've never 
had anybody on their deathbed say, I wish I could work five more hours. <laughs> Maybe sometime you need to ask God to help you prioritize your stuff. Amen? Amen. Amen. There's no child in here who says, I wish I just, well, some of them would say that if they're children, I wish I had more stuff. But when your parent is gone, my dad has been gone for 16 years. And let me tell you how I feel about that. I thank God for him, but I sure wish I had a little more time where I would have spent more time with him. I do. I do. I do. And he was a great man. He was. He was a great man. Everybody that knows my dad will say he was a great man. But listen, he was a great man to all them people. But he was an even greater man to me because ha over half of what I know, I learned it by watching him. And then here it is when he makes exit off of this side. God sends other men into my life. And he'll do the same thing for you. Are you grateful today? Amen. Come on, tell God thank you for faith-filled fathers. Father God is always. On behalf of Pastor Kevin B. Mack and the Mount Zion Church family, we would like to say thank you for tuning in. We hope that you have been blessed by something you have seen or heard today. Please stay connected to us through all of our social platforms. You can find us on our website at www.mtzecourse.org. You could also search for us on Facebook by searching for Mount Zion eCourse. You could also connect with us on Instagram at mtzecourse. And don't forget, to like and subscribe to this page.